everyone and welcome to another Picky Board Gamer episode. My name is Hectorakos and this is gonna be the last episode before I leave for my summer vacation. For this year I have selected a Greek island quite different than all the others. It is full of cats crying out for help. So stay around and learn how to play the Isle of Cats board game and join me in this rescue mission. At first place the island board in the middle of the table choosing the side that depicts a red cat on number 5. Take the black ship and place it on number 5. These here are the polyomino tiles of the game and we can find 6 different colors of cats as well as 2 different types of treasure. We have the copperish common treasure and the goldish rare treasure. The game comes with a huge bag in which we will place the green, the red, the purple, the orange and the blue cats as well as the rare treasure tokens. We will shuffle them and we will place the bag somewhere near the players. Separate the common treasure tokens by their type and place them below the island. If you are playing a two player game you will need five tokens of each type. For three or four players you will need eight or eleven tokens respectively from each treasure stack. Return all the unused treasure tokens back in the box. The last cat type we didn't place in the bag are the Oshek styles which we place one next to the other below the treasure tokens. Create a supply of fish tiles depicting one or three fish next to the board. Also create a supply with all the wooden cat pieces. Separate the cards of the game according to their color on their back. Purple cards are used only in the solo mode while the green ones are used in the family mode. For this tutorial I will only need the blue cards so I will return the rest of the cards back in the box. In the front of these cards we can find many colors which I will explain later. However, there are some blue cards which depict in the bottom left corner a bracketed letter. These are the module cards. The core box includes three modules A, B and C. Whenever you play a Nile of Cats game you need to include in your stack exactly three modules. So unless you have an expansion of the game offering some more modules you need to include all these three modules A, B and C in your stack, shuffle the stack and place it near your play area. In later expansion you will have more modules and you'll have more options of which three modules to include in your stack. These are the permanent basket tiles. Create a supply below the cards of the game with a green side facing up. Each player gains a ship board depicting a red cat in the top right corner as well as a permanent basket tile from the supply which he will place it face up next to his board. Then players select a first player at random. This player will select one of the available cat colors, will pick a cat and place it in the top paw space of the island. The rest of the players will repeat the process clockwisely. Before continuing I would like to explain some key terms regarding our boat and tile placement. The ship is split into small squares which we will use whenever we place our tiles. We have columns of squares and also rows of squares. The ship is also split into seven areas, seven rooms if you like and we can tell which room is which by these small symbols that are depicted in some of the squares. This is a polyomino tile placement game so all typical rules apply. The ship has boundaries which we can never exceed. Also we can never build a tile overlapping another tile. However we can overlap rooms. Also we can never place a tile like that diagonally. We have to place it orthogonally. Whenever we get cats or treasure we need to place them in our ship. Our first tile can be placed anywhere in our ship, however all the other tiles have to be placed touching to at least one other already placed tile in our ship. By the word touching we mean that it has to be connected orthogonally to at least one other tile. Diagonals don't count. When placing a tile the player can rotate his tile, he can flip it and then place it anywhere but it has to be touching one other tile. Some squares on the ship depict mice which the players will try to cover with their tiles. Finally, on the ship we can find treasure maps of five different colors. If a player ever manages to cover such a map with a cat tile of the same color, then the player gets an available common treasure from below the island and places it immediately on his ship. And this is how a setup of a two player game should look like. Please make sure to leave enough space on the left and right sides of the island as in these locations you will be placing tiles you will be drawing from this bag on each round. 
The theme of this game is rather simple. Players are in a cat rescue mission and they are trying to save as many cats as they can from this island to their boat before Vesh arrives. And this is gonna happen in five days, which is the rounds that this game lasts. So the game lasts for five rounds, or days if you like, and at the start of each of these days, the starting player, whose cat is at the top of this island, will take this bag and fill those two fields with a specific number of cats according to the number of players. For a two-player game we need eight cats, four and four. For a three-player game we need twelve, six and six. And for a four-player game we need sixteen cats, eight and eight. So the first player gets the bag and starts to draw tiles one after the other. If he ever draws a treasure, he will place that treasure below the island and he will continue drawing tiles until the field has the required number of cats. When we are done, we move to the next field. In this case, with a two-player game, we need four and four. After we are done with filling the fields, the day starts and it consists of five phases. First phase is fishing. Each player gains 20 fish from the bank and places it in front of his play area. The second phase is explore. The first player again deals 7 cards from the discovery deck to each of the players. Now players begin a drafting procedure. They will check their cards and will select 2 of them to keep and will pass the rest 5 to the player on their left so they will receive 5 cards from the player on their right. And in a 2 player game players just swap cards. Then again players will select another 2 cards and then will pass the rest 3 to their left and will receive another 3 from the player on their right. Then again players will select 2 more cards and swap again and finally players keep the last card they receive. So after the drafting procedure players again have 7 cards. These cards are not part of the player's hand yet. Players will secretly select which ones they want to buy by paying the cost depicted in the top left corner of these cards. The cost is paid in fish. After players select which ones they want to keep and pay them, these cards are gonna be part of their hand. The rest of the cards are gonna be discarded to a discard pile face down next to the discovery deck. There is no limit to the number of cards a player can have in his hand. Phase 3 is read lessons. Lessons are the blue cards of the game which subscribe objectives that will grant victory points at the end of the game. During this phase players will have to play all their lesson cards from their hand. Reading the bottom left corner of these cards, lessons are split to lessons and public lessons. If players have a public lesson, they have to read it loud and then place it somewhere in the middle of the table, face up so that everyone can see it. Public lessons may be fulfilled by all of the players. Normal lessons are private lessons and if a player has one or more of these in his hand, he will have to play them now face down in front of his play area. So everybody knows that this player has some hidden objectives that he will try to accomplish. These cards will remain there until the end of the game. If a public lesson card specifically asks to choose a color, then the player that played it will select one of the colors and place a wooden token on the card. Then the game proceeds to phase 4, which is the rescue cards phase. This phase is linked to the green rescue cards. Players select the rescue cards they wish to play from their hand. They don't have to play all of them and they can even play none. After they select them, they place them face down in front of their play area. And when all players are done, players flip these cards face up. These cards may depict baskets and or boots. Take note that the cats are just for illustration and have absolutely no meaning. At this moment players will add the values of their boots and this total will determine the new player order. The player with the highest boot total value will move to the top of the island while the player with the lowest total will be the last player. If two players have the same total value their relative order will remain the same. Players now alternate turns with the new player turn order, rescuing one cat each turn. To rescue a cat on his turn, a player must use a basket and also pay a cost in fish. 
Taking a cat from this field costs three fish, while taking a cat from this field costs five fish. Each cat saved needs to be placed in a basket. The green cards also offer a specific number of baskets. So, a player on his turn could discard this card to gain a basket or discard those two half-basket cards to gain a basket as well. A player also has the option to exhaust one of his permanent baskets and rescue a cat as well. After all the other players have had the opportunity to rescue a cat as well, on his next turn a player may use another basket and rescue another cat, and this may continue as long as the player has enough baskets and fish. So a player uses a basket, selects an available cat, pays the equivalent cost in fish and gets the tile and places it on his ship. If the two fields are empty or if the players decide to pass whatever comes first, then the phase is over. The last phase of the round is rare finds, which is linked to the yellow and brown cards. Using the player turn order, players alternate turns playing either a brown or a yellow card. Players instead may pass. If a player passes, then he is out for this phase. The phase continues until all players have passed. Yellow cards are linked to rare and common treasures. Usually a player gets a treasure and places it on his boat. Brown cards are linked to the Oshak's cats. When a player plays a brown card, he selects an available Oshak's cat and places it on his boat as per normal rules. Immediately after, he must assign a color to this cat. He selects an available wooden token and places it on top of this Oshak's cat. Now this cat is a purple cat. There are also some purple cards which grant instant effects for the player who plays them. These are called anytime and as the word specifies, this can be played from players at any time. They simply interrupt the game flow, execute the card, discard it and then the game proceeds. If two or more players want to play a purple card simultaneously and there is a timing conflict, then resolve the cards using player turn order. After the end of the fifth phase, the day is actually over. All unclaimed cats are not gonna be saved and they return back to the box. However, all unclaimed treasure, common or rare, remains below the island board. If players have any cards in their hand which they didn't play, they keep them and they also refresh their permanent baskets. Move the ship one space to the right and start the next day. If, however, the ship moves to the last space, then the game is over and we proceed with scoring. When it comes to scoring, players will lose one victory points for each rat icon still visible on their ship. And they will also lose five victory points for each room that is not completely filled. At this point, players will flip their lessons and they will score victory points if they have managed to satisfy the conditions that are subscribed on these cards. Players will also score victory points for the public lessons that are in the middle of the table, again if they have satisfied the conditions. Then players score 3 victory points for each rare treasure tile on their ship. The common treasures are mainly used to fill in the small gaps. But what gives the players the most points and what they are actually trying to do throughout the game is to create large groups of same colored cats. These groups of touching tiles are called families. A group of at least three same colored cat tiles is called a family and will grant the player 8 points. A 4 tile cat family will grant the player 11 points, 5 members 15 points and then for each extra member the player gets 5 extra points. So we have 20, 25, 30 and so on. We don't have sets of 3 green cats so we don't score points for these. We have a 5 member purple cat family giving the player 15 points. A 4 cat member blue family counting in the blue Oshaks giving the player 11 points. And finally, as these two red cats are not touching each other, we have two separate families of three members, which will give the player 8 plus 8, 16 victory points. The player who got the highest score wins the game, and in case of a tie, the player who has the most fish at hand by the end of the game is the winner. After that, 
all tight players share their victory. So that was how you can play the Isle of Cats and now you know what I'm gonna be doing during my holiday. Unfortunately, it's not gonna last too long, so if you like that video and want to see more, please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, have fun and play more board games.